Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 3, Lesson 1, One Dimensional Arrays, Exercise Number 6. We have a choose your own adventure. You know I love my pets. We're going to go ahead and do B, Pet Breeds. Let's go ahead and see what we have to code up. The Pet Store class declares an instance variable for a 1D array of string values to store the pet breeds available for adoption at a pet store. The constructor initializes the 1D array to store the number of values specified by the parameter. In petstore.java, we're going to write the toString method to return the new string containing the number of breeds followed by the length of the 1D array of breeds. Then we're going to come back to our store runner and print our pet store object. In our store runner, we're instantiating an object, neighborhood store, passing along a two parameters, neighborhood pet store and 16. In pet store, we have two instance variables. We have string name and we have string breeds. We have square brackets. That means this is our 1D array. And a 1D array is just a way we can use a variable to store multiple pieces of the same type of information. A bunch of strings, a bunch of ints, a bunch of doubles, a bunch of booleans. Much like a row in a table, well, that is all a 1D array is. Down here we have a constructor. I just want you to take note of the parameters of this constructor. The first is the name, but the second is an int number of breeds. If you remember in our store runner, we're passing along a number 16. I just want you to see how we're going to eventually get the length. And then we have our two string method, which we're going to use to return the length of our array. Two string was one of our last lessons in the last unit. And what that enabled us to do was return our object and give it actual useful information instead of returning just a location where the object is stored. We need to do this number of breeds and it has to be exact if you want to pass the test. Number of breeds, do our semicolon, then we're going to concatenate and we need to get the breeds array from above right here. In order to do that, we just call that variable but we just can't get the array right now. That's going to come up in a couple of lessons. What we want to get is the length. We have a special command in Java, which will give us the length of our array. Our 1D array, when we create it, is immutable. It means we can't change it. If we have five spots, that's all the spots that can be in that array. Because of that, it's very helpful to know what the size of our arrays are. In order to do that, we use the dot modifier and we call the length command. So breeds.length will return the length of the 1D array breeds, which should be 16. Let's go back to store runner. We need to print off our object system.out.println. And we're going to print neighborhood store. Make sure it's spelled right. It is not. Should have just copied that from the start. There we go. We got it spelled right now. Now when I hit run, I should get number of breeds in 16. Let's go ahead and see if we're right. Number of breeds in 16. The key to this lesson is really understanding what a 1D array is. And it's a data structure for organizing, processing, retrieving, and storing various same types of data. Ints for ints, doubles for doubles, booleans for booleans, strings for strings. Just note, when we create these arrays, they're empty. And because they're empty, they're going to be filled with a null value. And that'll be null for each data type. Booleans, it's false. Ints, it'd be a integer, zero. Double, it would be a double number, 0, 0.0. In strings, it's just going to say null. A 1D array is a reference object. And notice I said the word object. And because it's an object, it means it's a reference type, meaning it's referencing the location in memory where it's stored 
not the actual values. Finally, we talked about length, which returns how many elements can be stored in an array. Remember, an array is immutable. It means it can't change once we create it. Because of this, we can't add more elements. It's really helpful to know how many elements we have. Remember though, we start counting at zero in computer science. It means our first element is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Zero through nine, you might remember that from APCSP, that's just our base 10 counting system. Because it is, just remember now, the length of a 1D array is one more than the last index. If you see my example up here, there's five elements, but since we start counting at zero, the last element is at index four. Hopefully this video helped you understand one dimensional arrays a little better. As always kids, if you have any questions that come see me, otherwise I'll see you on the next video. See you later kids, bye, bye, bye.